Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at straight lines, so uh, the y equals mx plus c, and more specifically we're going to look at finding the gradient and the y-intercept. So we start off with some nice easier ones and it does get slightly trickier later on. So if you want to skip to the trickier ones, that's absolutely fine. This tends to be a multiple, uh, multiple choice question in the exam. Very easy marks, but also very easy marks to lose because what most people do is they get them muddled up and get them the wrong way round. So let's make sure that doesn't happen and do some examples. Before we do that, just a quick one. As I said, the equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c, where m, the number that's in front of the x, but not the x, is the gradient. And then the other number, this can be a plus c or a minus c, this number at the back here is where it crosses the y-axis. So here's my first equation of a straight line, y equals 4x plus 5. What's the gradient? Well, it's just the number that's in front of x. So the gradient here is 4, nice and easy. What's the y-intercept? Well, it's plus 5. So the y-intercept is just 5. Done. Exactly the same thing here, y equals 2x minus 7, the gradient is whatever is in front of the x, which is 2. No, it's not 2x, it's just the number, so 2. Y-intercept, I do include the minus 7. We don't just say 7, it is minus 7. Crosses the y-axis at minus 7. This one here, y equals minus 3x plus 6. We do include that minus with the gradient, we say it's not the x, but we do include the negative, so the gradient there would be minus 3, and the y-intercept is plus 6, or just 6. This one here, this tends to trip people up. They always go, well, the gradient is always the first number, then it's the y-intercept. But no, the gradient is always what is in front of the x. So in this case, what's in front of the x? It's minus 8. And then this must be the y-intercept. Now, if that's um, confusing or unsure, you are more than welcome to put it the other way, where they go minus 8x plus 10. The reason they write it like this is because it's not really that great to have a minus at the start like this. So they just swap the two around so it looks a bit neater like this. Okay, but both mean exactly the same thing. And remember, whatever is in front of the x, that is the gradient. So the gradient there, minus 8, and then the y-intercept is 10. This one here, if there's two negatives, obviously they probably won't write it like this, but the same still applies. Whatever's in front of x, in this case it's minus 6, is the gradient, and then another number at the back there, minus 1, must be the y-intercept. So they're the nice, quick and easy ones. Make sure you don't get them the other way around, which is what most people do in the exam, and cost yourself two easy marks. Okay, let's have a look at some slightly trickier ones, which we have here. So here I've just put some fractions in. Don't let this um, put you off. It's exactly the same thing. What's in front of the x? Well, it's a half, so the gradient's a half. And what is the number at the back? Well, it's a fraction, so minus 5, 6 must be the y-intercept. Not a problem. This is where we get a tad juicier. This one, we have a bracket. Don't worry, just expand the bracket. That's what I'm going to do. Again, if you're unsure of how to expand brackets, have a look at my expanding single brackets uh, video. So I'm going to draw my grid. 5 times uh, 2x is 10x. 5 times minus 3 is minus 15. So I can put that back up here. y equals... 10x minus 15, and then it's the same as the first sheet. What's in front of the x? Well, it's 10, so the gradient is 10. And what we got at the back? Minus 15, so that must be the y-intercept, minus 15. Okay, so if you see a bracket, not a problem, just expand it, and away you go. These ones here is where it gets a little bit more interesting. What most people do is they'll go, oh, the gradient is 10, and the y-intercept is 14. That is not true. If you remember, i just bring it back. The equation of a straight line is y equals whatever's going on here, but it must be y equals. In this example, we have 2y. So we need to do a little bit of rearranging the, um, the equations. Again, check out that video that I've done, rearranging equations or changing the subject, because it will help with some of these other ones. But nice and simply, if it's 2y, this means it's 2 times y, and I want to get rid of the 2. So if I divide that by 2, 
I'm going to be left with y. But if I divide this by 2, I have to divide this by 2 and this by 2. So I need to keep everything the same. So if I do 10x divided by 2, that's going to leave me with 5x. And if I do 14 divided by 2, that's going to leave me with 7. OK, so this is now fine. It's y equals, so it's in the right format. Gradient, therefore, is 5 because that's in front of the x. And the y-intercept is 7. So you just need to do a little bit of rearranging to make sure it's y equals. Same thing here. It's a 3y. You're probably already ahead of me. If I divide by 3, it's going to leave me with just y. Brilliant. If I divide that by 3, I have to divide that by 3. And I have to divide that by 3. So 9x divided by 3 is 3x minus 15 divided by 3. Well, 15 divided by 3 is just 5. So minus 15 divided by 3 must be minus 5. OK, now you've got it as y equals, absolutely fine. 3 must be the gradient because it's in front of the x. And then the minus 5, the y-intercept, as it's the gradient there. Oh, sorry, not the gradient, the uh, number at the back. Last two, slightly trickier here. This is where the rearranging equations video will definitely come in handy. We need to uh, change it so it's y equals. So we need to make y the subject. So I'm going to use the flow chart. You can use the balance method, absolutely fine. But I'm just going to use the flow chart in this example. So I start off with y, i times by 3, because it's 3y. And in the order of these doesn't really matter. Um, so let's go with the plus 12x. Then I'm going to minus 1, and then I get y. So I'm going to go back. Uh, sorry, I get 0. Sorry. So I used to saying y's and solving equations. Um, I get 0. So go backwards. 0. Do the opposite. We plus 1. We minus 12x, we divide by 3, and we get back to y, OK? So we now need to write this out. 0 plus 1, well, that's just 1. I'll write it here. Then I minus 12x, then I divide everything by 3, and that equals y. Now, we do need to do a little bit more simplifying with this. This is why it's a slightly trickier question. 1 divided by 3 is just a third, minus 12x divided by 3. Well, 12 divided by 3 is 4, so that would be minus 4x, and then it equals y. So by changing the subject to be y, or rearranging this to get it to be y equals, we have y equals a third minus 4x. So just like in the first one, remember, whatever's in front of the x, in this case it's minus 4, so minus 4 is the gradient for this one, and then we have a third as the y in 7. Again, you can swap those around if you wish, but that's how you would do that. You need to rearrange that one. Exactly the same thing with this one. We need to rearrange it to make y um, uh, the, the subject, which is absolutely fine, but this is a little trick. I didn't really pick this one because this is a minus... 2y, it could be minus 3y, just minus y, but, but the point is it's a minus y, which means you're dealing with negatives, and when you're rearranging in the flow chart, it can be a little bit tricky. So what you can do is what I'm about to show you. This will work, just tricky. This is a little bit easier. If it's a minus, there it was a positive, but if it's a minus, what you can do is add 2y to both sides. So that will leave you with minus 6x, because that just stays the same, plus 10, that stays the same on this side, and then 0 plus 2y is just 2y. Why is that useful? Well, if you have it like this, it now looks like this question here, where all you have to do is divide everything by 2, in which case that leaves you with minus 3x, plus 5 equals y. So again, it's now equal to y. Obviously, you can put y that side if you wish. But because it's equal to y, what's in front of x? Minus 3, so the gradient must be minus 3. And then the y-intercept is the number, which in this case is plus 5, or just plus 5. OK? So if it's a negative, I highly recommend doing that little step there. Just speeds everything up, and it's much easier to do. 
However, if otherwise, it's probably best just to use the flowchart or the balance method for rearranging the equation as you would do normally. So hopefully that clarifies a few of the uh, trickier uh, questions that could come up with working out the gradient and y-intercept of straight lines. And uh, good luck in getting those marks in the exam. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.